feel like I'm gonna need a cool Minecraft wallpaper for this video. Oh yeah. Perfect. What's up everybody? I am going to uh, make a really quick video just to show you everything that you need to know about getting onto Mongoose Coast. So first off, if you're going to be playing vanilla, which is perfectly accessible inside of the Minecraft launcher, if you didn't already know, under the Java section, so not the bedrock, but the Java, if you click on installations, you can create your own installation and choose the version here. So uh, 120.6 is currently the latest. Uh, we plan on hitting that at some point, but not right now. If you go all the way down to 120.4, you can even set in a uh, resolution if you want to. And there's a couple of other um, options in here too. But I, if you don't know what you're doing here, don't, don't mess with those. And then when you click that, it's going to create your own. And under play now, you can open up this little area and change between the, the, the versions that you want. And then just hit play. And then that'll get you going in a vanilla, and that'll get you going in a vanilla Minecraft um, installation. And then you just go to multiplayer and add the server. Now, what if you wanted to do a mod pack? Kearney has done us the kind favor of creating a new client side pack here. This one was for camp. And now if you look up Mongoose Coast here on CurseForge, you'll see right here on the bottom. I don't know what this is, um, but you know, I like the, the image here. Um, and you can see our old S&P pack here. Um, if you click on Mongoose Coast Enhanced and just hit Insult, it's a very small pack. And honestly, even if you have a lower end PC or an entry level PC or something like that, this might actually still be a good pack for you to use. Uh, because it actually comes with a lot of um, mods that help with performance. Immediately fast, I would assume, probably helps. I haven't heard of that one, but it does have Sodium, which is like a different renderer for, uh, for Minecraft, which is really nice. This also gives you the opportunity to look for a resource pack or a shader. And to do that, you can go over to Browse, change this from Mod Packs to Resource Packs. And uh, I've recently uh, started to really like the Excalibur texture pack. So it's this one. This is the one that adds mod support, which is really cool. I didn't know that it actually had that. So to install it, uh, for some reason, I can't install it through there because I think it's trying to pull a different version. Uh, but if you go into versions, you can find the 120.4. You select a profile and then select Mongoose Coast Enhance and hit install. And then under your resource packs, you're going to see Excalibur. Now, I've also been enjoying uh, Better Leaves, specifically Motchgen's Better Leaves. I, I really do like these. So we're going to go to version and then find the 120.41, select profile and put that on Mongoose Enhanced as well. And the last thing is the Stoneborn Dwarven Fantasy inspired UI overhaul. Now the same goes for shaders. You can browse here and go to shaders and then you'll see all the most popular ones here. The ones that I actually really like are these top two. Reimagined is a lighter version of Unbound. Unbound has like much cooler uh, reflections and everything. So we're gonna choose enhanced for that. And then we're gonna go back, choose this one. Also pick it up. The Insanity Shader is also really cool if you're looking for something a little bit more spooky. And then BSL Shaders is also a very uh, vanilla friendly one. So before you hit play, you're going to want to go to, into settings. If this is your first time ever playing CurseForge or using CurseForge. And you can set up uh, under the Minecraft tab here a custom resolution that you would like to use. And the amount of RAM uh, tied to your PC. So this is going to be a bar of all the RAM that's inside of your PC. And you can choose as much of it as you want or, you know, about six gigs. So that's about 6,000 megabytes is roughly like the most that you should ever need for a mod pack. I've seen some that's like, oh, we require eight, but that's for like something super, super heavy. This is a vanilla pack. You could probably get away with like two, 
Uh, not even, you know, probably even less. But I just keep mine at six because that handles me on all my other mod packs as well. So after that, you're just going to hit play and then it's going to open the default Minecraft launcher here. And this is where you can choose your uh, account and your installation and stuff like that, just like you would beforehand. So we're going to be looking for this. You should only see this through launching via CurseForge. Uh, this won't be part of your normal installation tab that we did earlier. Okay, and the pack is now loaded. This is our main screen. Thank you very much, Kearney, for putting this all together. I think this looks awesome. You have uh, some piratey music playing in the background. Beware, your first time launching this, this is going to be kind of loud, okay? Because your Minecraft settings have not been set. I have my music set to 5% right now, and you can hear it in the background. So we'll just pause that for now, just so it's not distracting. You're going to have a couple of really helpful links here, like a link directly to our Discord, if you're not already part of that, and then a link directly to the store. Go to store.mongoosecoast.com. This is our donation server. This is what helps uh, keep the server alive to, to let me pay for the server so I'm not coming out of pocket for it. This is not required at all. You get all of the permissions uh, for playing on the server just as the base level thing, but this is if you wanted to try to uh to to try your luck at a little bit more but uh and this will advance your rank on the on the server but that is mostly just a title change it doesn't come with any other permissions except for uh the ability to use slash jump at carpenter i think it's like the third rank in um so uh outside of that you're going to want to hit multiplayer proceed and then we're going to add our server here and the IP is play.mongoosecoast.com. And then you're going to know that you're connected to the right one when you see our logo and all of that stuff and the version that we're on currently, which is 120.4. And um, just hit join. And then you're going to get immediately asked if you... Uh, it says we recommend it. You do need this. Uh, I don't think it'll let you play without it. Uh, it'll also just like break some stuff if you don't have it it's a super super small resource pack that we have that just gives us custom uh images for our keys and the chests that are in the server it's really small and it does everything automatically even on a non-modded just a vanilla game you'll hit yes you'll see and it's already done um and then here we are on the server so the first thing that you're going to realize is that you actually receive 3,000 doubloons coming into the server, bringing your balance up to 3,100. And uh, you're going to be presented with a little message here that tells you how to use slash kit open. I'll get to that here in a second. And a link here, a clickable link that says join the audio client by clicking here. Oh, okay. It's because, uh, because it's, it's trying to use, we don't have a certificate for the server. So like it says that it's invalid. Uh, it's just running off of the server. You have to click help me understand. This could be the same on uh, Chrome as well. And it'll just ask if you want to connect to it. And then it's going to ask if it could use your microphone. This is uh, this is only if you want to use the proximity chat in the game. And you can see that it's uh, it's lighting up every time I talk because it's currently seeing my microphone. And this is where you can change your sensitivity. That way, if you breathe a lot and you just see it kind of like lighten up too much, bring it up. Bring it up to like where your normal talking voice is, just like right, right below it. That way it's not cutting you off or anything. Uh, you can remove noise suppression and echo and stuff through here as well. And you can mute your mic. So say you don't want to listen to anybody or, or you don't want people to hear you, you can mute them. And then if there's other people on the server, which you probably saw through our little demo on the live stream uh, earlier this week, they'll appear here. And you can mute them. They all have their own separate volume sliders and everything like that. You can hear everybody within 30 blocks from you. Don't feel like talking to anybody on the server? By all means, just close out that page, and then that's it. You don't even need you don't even need to use it. Um, and people will know that because they won't see your name in the list of people that can hear you. So they'll know that you don't have audio up. <clears throat> so since this is a fresh version of Minecraft, we have obviously our little tutorial thing here, which I I, I just wish you could turn that off. And we need to go and change a couple of things. For me, I mean, mostly controls, mouse settings. Just turn down the sensitivity because it's crazy. Um, and then go into resource packs and we're going to add Excalibur. You'll see our Mongoose Coast resource pack up here on the top. You can't remove that. We're going to put uh, Stoneborn on top of that. And then 
we're going to put in uh, Better Leaves. This is just my combo that I like. I know it warns you that it's for an older version of Minecraft. It still works. It's fine. Minecraft resource packs are just really dumb that way. And then boom, we have our texture pack on the server, which looks great. And we have our really cool UI. And uh, now all we need to do is activate our shaders, which we can do by hitting escape, going to video settings, shader packs, and then here's our list of shaders that we downloaded earlier. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys uh, BSL really quick. There you go. So BSL is pretty cool, but it has like kind of, it's a bit too, too bloomy for me, but I do like that the colors are very um, uh, flat. Like it doesn't color them too much. Like they, they look pretty true to what the, the, the texture pack or the resource pack is, is giving us. Um, personally, I like the unbound shaders and you can change these settings too by going into the shader uh, settings and you can change a bunch of stuff and really tweak shaders to make them work for you. But I like these ones. I, I kind of like the warmer tone. I think it fits the server quite well. Uh, another thing that you'll notice, uh, especially if you're using the mod pack, is that you have a mini map up here. And not only a mini map, but when you open up your inventory, you have all of these recipes here. So in case you forget how to make um, oak stairs, uh, you can click on it and you'll see the recipe here. Uh, what's nice actually about this is that if you look up some of our custom stuff, like you can see that you've been given a free waystone. This one is a private one, so you can create a private waystone at wherever your base is going to be. And then you can use that to uh, to get back to your base by coming to the main waystone here, going to server waystones, and then you can, um, well, server will take you between the two, but under private, you'll see your waystone here and all the other private waystones that you come across from all your friends. Uh, but again, the the uh, recipe book here actually will help you out with these waystone um, recipes. So if we look up, because it's based off of the brewing stand here, if we look up brewing stand, you'll get the brewing stand and then you'll get the waystones. Um, I know it's a little hard to see with this texture pack if you're not used to it, um, but you can see this one right here, the type is public. So this is one when you place it down, everybody will see it. Uh, and then there's the, uh, Public modern, two versions of public. Okay, well, I, I don't know if the redstone one is active or not, uh, but the emerald one definitely is. The emerald one with two name tags on the sides will give you a private one. So that's the one that you've been given for free. Uh, the same thing works for uh, the ender pearl. If we look up recipes if, I, if you right click on enderpearl because there's no recipe to make an enderpearl but if you right click it shows you what uses enderpearls um so it can teach you how to make an eye of ender but it can also teach you how to make the empty teleportation book or the warp scroll as well uh same thing with the eye of ender for the warp stone which is the high-end one that you can keep on you to teleport places and stuff so that's one way of finding that if you want to get rid of that just hit Control o and it hides it okay uh, personally, I, I like keeping it hidden because that does lower your FPS having that up on the side. So if you're struggling with FPS, but you want to use the mod pack and you have to have the recipes, uh, control O toggles that. So you can bring that up and hide it. Uh, you've been given a book. This book has some good information. in it. It's only four pages, really easy to read. You've been given your first ship, some food, and like I said earlier, the waste up. Uh, and when you join, it'll say to use kit open. This is how you're going to access all of your different ranks. Um, so if you uh, did end up getting something off of the store, that's going to add to your to donation total, uh, which you can view by doing DM view. So that's a donation manager. That's the plugin that we use. And you can see that I've donated zero dollars on this account. Um, since I can't necessarily give my money to myself, I typically donate to a charity and I use that as my total on the server. Uh, that's how I've always done it. I feel like it's fair. So that's how you can check your, your donation total. And if we go back into kit open, you can see that there's a weekly kit here that you guys can redeem weekly for uh, keys and a thousand doubloons. You do this every seven days. So if you click it, you'll see I've been given a thousand doubloons and then two keys to go open up. And because of uh, I'm the base rank of pirate, hello, you can see my rank there before my name. Um, I have access to the pirate kit. And so if I click on this, you get one uh, one time use on that kit. You can see I've been given more keys 
And I've been given a set of uh, beginner armor here and a couple of base tools. So I got the Rock Biter, Scoopy, Echo Piercer, and Chop Chop Jr. Um, so you have just a nice base set of uh, tools to get you going and then a base set of armor just so you're not, you know, struggling too much on the first night. Uh, oh, before we leave, uh, if you are a current subscriber of my Twitch channel, you can actually come over here and link your Discord. So if you just come up to this guy and right click him, it's going to give you a link code. So mine's 9400. And then PM the Commodore bot, which is on our Discord server. Um, it's going to link your Discord account to your current Minecraft account. And then when you go into kit open, you're going to see what tier uh, subscriber you are. You're going to have a special kit for you. So if you're tier one, you're going to have a kit. If you're tier two, you're going to have a different kit. If you're tier three, you're going to have a different kit. Um, and that'll be something that you can open monthly. And it's, uh, it's all elder keys. So if you're tier one, you get an elder key. If you're tier two, I think you get three elder keys. And I think if you're tier three, you get five or seven. I can't remember. Um, it's good. So if you're already spending money over there, you basically get keys for half, uh, elder keys for half off uh, through this guy. So uh, that's one way that you can uh, link things up. Over here is the clan leaderboard, uh, which right now it's just my admin account that we were testing with and then Bruce's test uh, clan as well. But uh, we have an experience based system here uh, and whoever has the highest level clan will be in position one two, three, and then and further down as we go. Uh, we don't have anything really set up for this just yet. This is sort of a placeholder to get the stuff kind of in place while we work on stuff, but it was a lot of back and forth. Um, but this will become a feature later on. Uh, so anyways, your keys. If you grab your key of valor here, and this is one of the reasons why we require the resource pack is that way you know which ones are your keys. Uh, you can come over here to the chest of valor and in this chest if you left click to punch it you can see what's inside of here and the chances of you getting stuff uh, works just like it did last uh, season except for this time you're not going to get experience or money from these first two chests uh, so if i come up here with the key of valor and i right click the key it'll open up the chest and i got a daring deceiver um, which is a rare chest plate which is much better than my current one, so I can swap that out. Uh, I think this is diamond. I'm still getting used to this texture pack, but I'm pretty sure that this is diamond. Uh, don't be fooled by whatever the armor looks like with these uh, items, because I can change everything about them. So even if it looks like a leather chest plate, I can make it have the same durability and toughness and armor as diamond or netherite. So don't don't be don't be thinking that just because you got like maybe a leather piece that it's uh, not as good, if not better than um, something that is of higher quality. Let's try one more time. Cuff tie boots. Okay, that's what I expected more so of. Um, and I think those are the ones I have. Armor one, armor one. Yep. Uh, so anyways, the forge fire key, it's red. Uh, has like little fire bits on it. You come over here to where the fire red banners are. Same thing, if you punch this, you can see that this chest is full of tools, weapons, and um, the ability to get other keys. So let's try our luck. I saw a legendary in there. <laughs> we were one away from uh, the Komatsu. And another Echo Piercer. Okay. Come on, a third Echo Piercer. A Wonder Blade. Come on, just, just give me something cool to show people. Okay, all right. So you get the gist, okay? Um, it's just a uh, just a way of getting like new stuff. And something actually to point out, um, and these will be a good, well, I guess not a great example because they're lower end stuff. The higher end stuff has a much wider range of stat changes. Just because you and someone else may get the same item, like an Echo Piercer, you can see there that the knockback resistance here changes quite a lot between these and that can be the same thing for enchants uh attack damage defense uh all the stats and everything almost every single piece of gear has a range of stats that it can roll so 
just because it's the same item, you might actually get one here, like this one, uh, which is much better than uh, than the other ones. Uh, and then the elder chest over here, elder's relic, that's the name. Um, this is the high end chest that has uh, a much higher chance, so a 30% chance of getting any of the legendaries in the game, or even the highest stuff, which are set pieces. Um, and you can see that those start here with this dark teal, teal color, and then the brighter teal, you can see the difference here. This one is the highest set here on the server. This is a mongoose pirate set, uh, which is unbreakable and soulbound, um, which is going to be really tough to get. Um, the whole set of it anyways these all have set bonuses so like when you wear the whole set you may get bonus luck or bonus fire protection or um the mongoose pirate set gives you a a shield uh basically that blocks 60 percent of all damage coming at you um which is very cool and and it works it's crazy uh this is also a place where you can get more keys and the only chest that you can get money in as well Ooh, moving back this way we have a bounty system because what are pirates without bounties? Um, so there's a board here where you can uh, come to this guy and set a bounty on someone. Bounties only last for 24 hours. That is regardless if the person is online or not. Um, if it doesn't get claimed within that time, you get your money back. There is a 10% tax on bounties. So if you wanna put 100 gold on someone, then you're gonna be paying 110 gold. Um, we can click see all players and then we can see all the people around here so say i wanted to put a bounty on my other account and i want to add maybe a hundred you can see the bounty up here move one i want to put maybe 200 on him or let's say i wanted to do a custom amount so let's do like a thousand then i'll hit yes you can see set a bounty of a thousand and at the top there i paid 1.1k and so since Hey Potato now has the highest bounty, this board will automatically update in like five seconds, I think is when it rotates every five seconds. Hey Potato is now the most wanted on the board and Mud Boys moved down to the second one. It Sometimes it, it refreshes twice. I think it's because it refreshes the posters in the other world as well. Um, so you can come here and see who's the top four uh, wanted people on the server or you can just right click this guy and you can see all the bounties that are on the server at that time in this building right here is our auction house um i have i forgot to give myself permissions for this so i need to go and make sure to do that uh, but that'll open up the auction house if you guys were played last season you know what that is and then over here is the local market where you can right click her and see just basic level blocks for like regular building stuff uh, or if you want to come in here and sell things as well say you've been mining a bunch of stone and you have a bunch of extra you can come in here and sell it same thing for farming items uh, some mob drops as well so if you have a lot of mob drops you can come in here and sell i assume ender pearls is going to be a pretty good source of money later on um, same thing with like the ores you know so if you have too much copper which everybody does you can smelt it down and come in here and sell copper ingots. Um, and then there's redstone stuff for people that want to do redstone things. And then some basic food. So say I wanted to buy some baked potatoes. We go back and just check the price. So they're $5.25 each. Uh, so I want to buy 16 of them. And that charged me $84. Um, but now I have some food for the road if I didn't want to do uh, my cooked cod. But you know, baked potatoes, I feel like are better, even though they're kind of not. Just by looking at the stats here. <laughs> um, and that's it for the spawn. Outside of that, you can take your little boat and uh, go sailing and try to find a place of your own. Oh, I can't place vehicles here. I'm going to have to change that. Um, another permission. See, this is why we, we test stuff. But anyways... Uh, once I change uh, the permissions of this area to place vehicles down, um, you will be able to place your boat and then go swimming. Uh, to round off the mods here, if you press J, so you can look up your mini map here. Uh, Journey map always starts with this. These are the developers who make it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. 
connect close, and then every time you press J after that, it'll open up the big map. Um, and you can move this around. Uh, I believe you can just right click and create waypoints as well. So if you wanted to make a waypoint for spawn, you can do that. And then you'll see it here. Um, I find that kind of annoying, so I typically like disable them so I don't see it, uh, but I can always enable it later on and then, um, oh, nope, that got rid of it completely. I thought, spawn, enabled, off, there we go. No, wait, they changed the way this works. I haven't used journey map in a long time. Waypoints. Yeah, there's spawn. So um, then we can turn it on and you can see there in the background it's turning on and off. I thought you could still see it on this map. That's why I was saying that. But this is also where you can turn on and off your mini map. You can also change the size of it. I personally hate how huge it is every time it boots up, but I think I'm probably going to play without the mini map because I, I like the immersion. So anyways, that's how everything works. As of the time that this video releases it will be 24 hours before the server opens up, or at least when my stream should have started by then. Um, I'm kind of at the mercy of my work day. So uh, shooting for about 6 p.m. Pacific time on Friday, which is going to be uh, tomorrow from this video's release. And uh, I hope to see you all there. Bye-bye.